Hey, everybody. It is uh, 11 in the morning on uh, Thursday. We have a, uh, a very special show today. This is really exciting for me. Uh, if you guys, uh, you know, you follow the show, you know me, you know there's maybe five or six brands in the entire world that um, I, I love and admire and respect and follow. And, and, you know, most of those brands are brands that are deeply rooted in um, emotions. So it's, they're, they're great products they they, they, you know, they keep their, their brand promises, but the, the emotion that these brands really elicit are, are the things that I connect with. Of course, everybody knows, you know, my, my love of Nike and, you know, other brands like that. But uh, one of the brands I, I've been completely, um, you know, uh, we'll call it borderline obsessed with since I was a, a child is, of course, Porsche. And, uh, you know, huge fan of, you know, 911s and have really um, paid a lot of attention to the brand over the last 20 years. And, you know, when I was, you know, growing in my marketing career, it's a brand, um, you know, similar to Nike that I've really sort of followed a lot of what they've done and sort of tried to emulate some of the or or learn from the brand, you know, through osmosis, because obviously it's a it's a brand deeply, deeply rooted in um, community and in a, a really passionate following. So uh, today's show, wow, how did we pull this one off? Um, on the today's show, we have the president and the CEO of Porsche Canada. And uh, this is this is a real honor. Um, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, it's, it's Mark Wayun. And and Mark doesn't know this. I'm going to bring him on the, the show in, in about 30 seconds. But when he was first named um, president of Porsche Canada, I was hired uh, by a PR agency to put together uh, a dinner for him to introduce him to some of the um, the smartest and brightest people in the the, the Toronto community. And uh, I don't know if the dinner ever happened. I wasn't invited to it, um, but you know, I put uh, I put together the guest list for him, and uh, and hopefully it, it happened and he was welcome to the community. So, um, without any uh, further chatting from me, uh, please let's uh, welcome Mark Wayun to the show. Mark, thank, thank you for doing this. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure to talk a little bit about the brand and the Porsche passion. Yeah, uh, that that's great. So, um, you you've been uh, president of the Porsche Canada for about two years now. How has your time been in Canada? Yeah, a bit more than two years. Uh, it's two years and uh, nine months. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm getting used to it. No, it's it's a great experience. You know, I I really wanted to. Uh, I've been president of Porsche in France already. Uh, couple of years before so um, uh, it was good for me to uh, to go to another country to uh, to see uh, I mean another Porsche community of course but also another country is it, it, I think it's important for, for you to if you want to continue to learn uh, if you want to continue to, to to develop to to get creative get new ideas it's important to see uh, a different culture a different environment and Canada is, 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 is great for that I mean, this is a great country really having good time here. Oh, that, that's incredible. So you, you mentioned, you know, different culture. Uh, you know, there, there's a different culture, obviously, from coming from France to Canada. But Canada, that alone is is a you know a bit of a culture shock. But also within Canada, you know, almost every province has its own unique culture. And in you know somewhere like Toronto or Vancouver, there there's multiple cultures inside. You know, what was kind of the learning curve for you to you know come into a different environment, especially with you know one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Obviously, you've worked for the company for you know a decade and and more than a decade so porsche isn't new to you but canada was new to you so how how is that um, how did you sort of get used to the differences oh it's um it's a vast question i, I would say the first thing that is really striking when you arrive here um, and, and where you need really need to redefine your your references you know is the size of the country because um, for example when in france i organized uh, a big event for uh, the Porsche community. It was possible to, uh, for example, uh, organize the event in Le Mans and get people from Paris, from Marseille, from Lyon, Bordeaux, from everywhere. Here in Canada, you, you have a, a vast country with, with uh, different provinces, and it's just impossible to, to gather the whole community uh, at one place. So um, I would say, first of all, it's, it's a country with such a different cultures, you know, from Quebec, when you go to, to, uh, to Toronto, then uh, moving to the West, uh, it looks like it's a country with different some countries inside. 
And uh, and for that reason, of course, when we talk about Porsche, that uh, creates um, some challenges. If you really want to activate the community and and uh, engage with the community, which which I try to do, uh, but at the other hand, it's, it's a chance because uh, you can really really uh, see huge differences. Of course. Brand, the Porsche community has some similarities, but you see huge differences in terms of, of target group, if, in terms of how, how people live the Porsche passion. Uh, it's very, very different uh, between, for example, Quebec in the east and uh, Vancouver in, in the west. So uh, it's, it's an occasion to, to engage with, uh, with different communities. The, for example, we have lots of Asian customers in, uh, in Canada, and, and this was new for me. For example, uh, of course, uh, going to Quebec, speaking French was, let's say, more, more familiar. And, and I see a, a huge Porsche passion in, in Quebec. And, and Toronto is, is also a, a different place where it's a, it's a mosaic of, uh, of communities, a mosaic of, of, uh, of countries there. It's an incredible place. I've never seen such a place before, honestly. Um, it's a mosaic where there is a harmony and there are differences. And it's all of that um, uh, is, is really uh, working very well. And, and this, this, this city is, is, is really interesting to live with. Mm. So you, uh, you're president of uh, Porsche Paris. So obviously, you know the job uh, backwards and forwards. But how much of your experience in, in Europe were you able to blend into uh, you know, your Canadian position? Or did you have to rethink everything, all your strategy right from the beginning? Oh, of course, you arrive um, in a new job with some ideas. And uh, of course, you want to use what you learned in your previous position. And, and uh, for me, it was extremely useful to have already this role uh, within the Porsche world. But, you know, uh, an important thing is to, uh, to learn before. Uh, you, you you do something. So it's it's clear that uh, um, here I think the, the the first thing I wanted to learn is is about the culture. Um, you know um, the culture of my team. It's important for me to have a corporate culture that is uh, well defined. And I, I really it's it's I would say it's my touch really to to think about first how I interact with my team, how I, I empower my team. Um, how I, I try to make sure that that uh, uh, people are, are not only professionals but also engaged and uh, and passionate about what they do, and for that I had of course to adapt to uh, to, to a country where um, uh, there is a, a lot more diversity, and I think it's it's something very positive. It creates a lot of value, a lot more diversity. Uh, of course, it's North America; it's different from Europe. So, um, but in fact. I would say yes. The, the first thing I did is to to try to, to to use my experience, but also learn from here to create a new corporate culture to empower people, um, to define clear visions and how I want to get there. And then uh, to I try to learn about the Canadian market. It is, as I said, it's very different. Canadian dealers, for example, here sell on average uh, approximately 400 new cars. Uh, per outlet, which, which is approximately three times more than in France. So they are organized differently. They are extremely professional. They are very independent because they are very remote from where I am. In France, I was able to visit two, three dealers per day when I was traveling. Uh, here, um, if I can visit one uh, dealer per day or, or maximum two, that's a maximum. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's uh, very different. A learning curve, for sure. But then, what I try to do is really to try to, to unify, uh, to get, unite the community, the Porsche community that has so many assets and so many uh, differences, you know, between motorsports, um, uh, classic cars, um, uh, also uh, the, looking at the future, uh, Taycan early adopters that are really techno freaks, that are really looking for the, the latest technology. All of that is, is, I would say, under one roof, the Porsche passion. But my role here is really to make sure that um, uh, this world is works in harmony and that uh, it goes also through the official dealerships. And uh, yeah, I would say that I would summarize that with an internal task and an external task that have been, kept me busy during the first month here. So you said something really interesting. Um, I've always looked at your job as being one of the more difficult jobs in, you know, you know, leading a major recognizable brand because obviously you, you know, you're responsible for revenue, you're responsible for, you know, selling new cars, but unlike any other brand I can think of, Porsche 
has such a deep history where, um, you know, I, I read a stat and I, I could be wrong, but I think it was like 70% of every Porsche that was ever made is still on the road. So there's, there's so many people that, you know, love these cars and they, the, the communities and the older cars and the air cooled and the water cooled and, and all this. So you have to, you have to make sure that the company is moving in the right direction from a revenue standpoint, but you also own one of the most interesting brands in the world that is so deep in history that you can't, you can't ignore the people who are in, in sort of one side and, and to favor the both. You, you really have to, you know, pay attention to so many different areas at the same time. That, that's totally true. That's totally true. And that, that creates, uh, I mean, I'm really passionate about that because you really, you really need to find the right balance. You know, be, being passionate mm -hmm. about Porsche doesn't give you uh, the skills to lead uh, a company. And, uh, mm -hmm. and when, I, when I entered Porsche, of course, I, it, was a, it was a childhood dream for me. And I can really, I mean it, I mean it because I dreamt about this, this working for this company since I think I was... 13 years old or something so when you attend the company then then you just need to cool down and say okay who, who i am now I, i'm a, i'm really a passionate or i must be a bet the best professional so i forget a little bit about the passion uh, of course it's still there but you need first of all to uh, to lead a company and that's the most important because uh, you have customers you have uh, shareholders and uh, you have a team so um, that's the most important. But uh, I think the best thing to do is really to combine um, a profit, to be a good professional and to be, I wouldn't maybe say passionate because with passion, you sometimes don't look at things with objectivity, but I would say enthusiastic. You know, I, you need to remain enthusiastic. And I, I often say I entered Porsche, I was passionate by, by cars and by um, driving Porsche. No, I'm more passionate about leading people to uh, to make sure that we uh, represent the brand the best way in Canada. So really leading people now is uh, is the most important for me uh, to really create a momentum, to uh, to create also uh, engagement and to uh, to deliver results. That's the most important. And now, especially now where the car industry is, is, is changing. So, so you need to find the right balance. And I always, I'm, I'm very careful at that. I, I take always sometimes to connect and engage with the community, speak about Porsche passion, Porsche history, Porsche classic. It's, it's part of my, my job. Of course, it's also something I like, but I always balance my time between these, between, uh, of course, uh, reporting to my shareholders, defining the right KPIs, and also sp spending time with my team. So I, I would say, yeah, and, and, and last but not least, engaging with customers, you know, in, in uh, customer service, for example, um, it's also very important for me. To be customer centric is, um, is, is my wisdom. <laughs> when I really want to remain customer centric. Mm -hmm. That's great. So um, obviously COVID has changed everything for business in general. Um, dealerships, of course, you've had to, I assume, reimagine a lot of the way, just even the process of, of selling cars uh, as a luxury brand. And, you know, as a brand that, um, you know, it, you know, you're aspirational, inspirational and all those things. How, how did, you know, how does a high touch brand adapt to a no touch world now? Hmm. <laughs> Surprisingly, relatively well. Uh, I, I think that, uh, especially because we have a, uh, our community is is very connected. Um, most of our customers, enthusiasts, are uh, online, and uh, of course. So my, my first priority when when this whole crisis arrived was was to define the right measures to uh, to protect our staff to to help our dealers because that has been a terrible time for our dealers they had to shut down weeks and weeks and um, and, and, and everything was completely disrupted so as i would say the, the first thing that i did with my team is to to react uh, quickly to the situation uh, get people uh, equipped to work from home um, support our dealers uh, because they they, they really uh, had difficult time and, and then we immediately started to to think about the new normal and uh, we did that relatively early i, I created uh, a task force um, uh, beginning of march already they, they were they were at that time i can tell you a, a short story it, there was only one person that uh, deceased from covid at that time one person and we 
but we anticipated that this would be a, a massive hit uh, for 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 the people, for the businesses in Canada. So we started our uh, task force beginning of March, and we you know progressively moved to one from one step to another. The first step was of course protecting people, protecting the, the business, talking to our customers, and then we moved to a step where we we said okay we we need to continue to engage with our customers, and we move. Um, everything to digital. We we move our communication. We move. We stopped, of course, all live events, unfortunately. But we did a lot of of digital campaigns, digital interaction, uh, connecting with the Porsche Club, doing live chats like today, um, uh, defining campaigns uh, online like uh, United by Passion, where we um, ask. Uh, our dealers to also uh, uh, do lots of local activation online. And last but not least, we, we moved our processes online um, with um, uh, using our uh, existing assets like the Porsche configurator. We moved our, our uh, stock inventory, uh, our inventory online very rapidly. Uh, and we have seen a huge traction there. For example, if I look at um, uh, car configurations that have been uh, made online by our customers, it, it bumped of I think 20 to 25 percent during the last month. So people are really co continue to interact with us, but with a journey that is more online and and a little bit more physical now people, because we see people back in the dealerships. But we had also to prepare the network to to provide lots of guidelines to reopen. That was a lot of work to, to, to guarantee health and safety measures, to welcome our customers safely, uh, to allow our staff to work safely. So all of that uh, kept us busy, I would say. But we were, I think that the main thing, uh, the most important thing was to, to remain agile and to be ready for changes. And the, the only thing that doesn't change now is that changes are possible every day. It's, it's really something that is new. We need to be, uh, to adapt to a new situation uh, instantly, and um, and we have been relatively, uh, I would say, diligent in that. Also, communicating a lot with our dealer network, with our dealer council about all the measures we implemented. So, yeah, lots of things to do. Yeah, no, it's it's it, in in you guys reacted really, you know, like brands either get it right or get it wrong. There's kind of like no in between, uh, you know, when when there's there's something like this, and and you guys you know, from everything I can see as an outsider, you got it all right. And 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 I think for the most part, a lot of the automobile industry got it right, uh, you know, um, you know, I, it, which I, I think is a, you know, really interesting. You, um, you, know, you, you can't talk about Porsche without the community. You've mentioned it several times already. And, you know, it, it, one of the things I find so interesting about the Porsche community and is, you know, like I, I go and bring a trailer every day. I'm on the hunt for a 911 SC, and and you know one of the the most fascinating things I'm amazed by, and and I can't think of any other brand. You, you know, you can talk about Mercedes or you can talk about some of the other luxury car brands. Nobody has the same um, ownership in their community. And, and what I mean by is the community feels ownership of the brand. So you know, I'm I'm bidding on on a car on bring a trailer and you look in the comments and there's 25 people who can just by eyeballing the photos tell you that this has been modified or the you know the car is sitting too high or too low and they almost want to protect the community they don't like you know please buy the car but make sure you know everything that's going into it and i'm not sure any brand can actually um make that happen it's something organic but you've done a great job of sustaining that which i think is really fascinating so you know how important is it for you know enthusiasts owners and fans to actually feel ownership of the brand because it's something that not all brands think about worry about or even try to make happen I, I think that uh, so that has something to do with the roots and the DNA of the brand because uh, I think that uh, the, the brand, you know, started very modestly and has never been arrogant, has always been accessible. Uh, it's it's a luxury brand, yes, but it's a brand that can speak to everyone and uh, uh, it's an accessible brand. And you know, everybody, I think, can say well, it's not about the money you have in your pocket. It's not the model, about the model you buy. You know, I, I've I've been to maybe hundreds of, of gatherings of, of Porsche fans and 
you know, a, a guy coming with a, a old uh, $6,000 944 is as proud of this car as the, the guy that rides with the latest GT2 RS. It's not about the money, it's about sharing a passion. Uh, and it's about a brand that has always been um, accessible. And uh, I would say it's maybe the only luxury brand where every person can say, one day, I have a dream, but one day maybe I can make it happen. You know, starting with, with uh, and, and this is the story of almost everyone, including myself. I started with 944, maybe not the best purchase I made at that time, uh, because uh, the, the car was, uh, you know, had a lot of repairs to do. But I started with this car and I was so proud about it. And um, and then I moved to, uh, to a, a 3.2, a 911 from 86, and then to a 920 NGT from 90. And progressively, I, I moved and, and, you know, every model has its, its own personality. And so I think that it's basically the reason why people engage so much around the brand. Yeah, so Magnus Walker, sort of the, the king of the Porsche collectors, he, he, he was on the show a month or two ago, and he, he's a, a big proponent of there's, there's a, a Porsche for every budget, and, uh, and I, I believe it. And, and uh, that, that's even that something that's really fascinating and interesting. So, um, you know, go, going back a little bit, you know, focusing more on Porsche Canada. Um, I, I read that there's a, a large scale Porsche dealership going into, um, you know, one of our, our major suburban shopping malls in Toronto. Uh, I think this is a brilliant idea because, um, you know, not only do you combine foot traffic, you know, when people are back in the malls, but it's an outlet for people to actually leave their cars for service and go do something else and, you know, not get stranded, you know, maybe in a, in a faraway location. Um, can you talk a little bit about the the concept behind that and, and where it came from? Because I, I think it's I think it's really brilliant. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a new concept um, called Porsche Now. Um, we implemented this concept last year already um, in in Richmond, uh, very successfully. People really like it, and uh, we will start um, the same concept in Markham uh, in one month from now. So it's it's a way to simply to go where people go, uh, you know, and to uh, to also uh, engage with younger uh, target groups, um, you know, people that are maybe not going spontaneously in dealerships, uh, because we know that it's more, let's say, our traditional customers that are not the brand already, you know, entering a dealership. Sometimes it's a bit impressive. Huh? It's, uh, it's 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 big, and uh, you, you don't know if you will be welcome. And I can tell you, you will be, but maybe some people don't know that. And uh, uh, for younger generation that go to more where you know uh, all the brands, uh, uh, fashionable brands, for example, are present, they 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 can have this first contact with the brand. And uh, we don't need to put many cars there, um, uh, just one or two, and that's enough. And then you get you get the first impression of, of the brand, and we can also uh, we have lots of uh, digital signage and uh, possibilities to interact with screens. Um, we can do uh, temporary exhibitions. We can have an artist coming and um, and uh, uh, painting on uh, as we did in, in Richmond, and we'll do the same here in Markham. So it's a new way, I would say, to engage with um, uh, younger target groups that we want to attract, that we want to talk to. Uh, and uh, I, it's it's working very well. We see a lot of traffic. Uh, we we sell cars, um, and uh, and for example, for a Taycan, that is a completely new model uh, for um, uh, talking not only to traditional Porsche owners but also to 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 younger target groups. We see that a lot. Uh, it's it's a perfect place to present this car. Mm. So you mentioned Taycan, and yeah, you know, obviously the the first Porsche electric, fully electric offering. There's been hybrid models before. Um, how important is electric in the future of uh, Porsche's plans, and and will will we ever see an electric 911? <laughs> That's a question I hear a few times already. Um, it's uh, it's extremely important because electric in general um, is is important for all all car makers, but I think especially for for us because first of all um, we are in a segment where um, uh, you know most of the innovations. Uh, in the car business are coming from um, uh, sports cars or luxury cars, you know, uh, ABS, for example, or 
you know, there, there are lots of examples. And Porsche also uh, uh, started, for example, to, to, to produce with the race car some uh, very lightweight uh, bodies uh, with, uh, with with carbon, for example, that started with sports cars, and then that goes more to um, to the, the, the let's say the, the, the mass market. Huh? And um, uh, so, f for that reason, I, I, I think that um, we need to show that, um, of course, we need to be. We have a DNA. Uh, we are sports cars maker, but uh, we want now to create the sports cars of the future. And the sports cars of the future needs to also be sustainable. And uh, we want to reduce our footprint. Uh, we want to. Our vision is really to go to the to a zero impact factory, not only a zero impact car or zero emission car, but a zero impact factory. And the Taycan is really the first stone, the first step in this direction. And uh, I can tell you, our our goal is that. Within the next five years, 50% uh, of our uh, modern lineup is electrified. So that means uh, fully electric or um, plug-in hybrid. Of course, we we have um, we will continue to produce uh, highly emotional sports cars that have a combustion engine, and and that's good for the fans. Um, we want to continue that as long as we can. But you know, there are more and more regulations. Uh, these, these cars, maybe one day you will not be able to drive them in city centers anymore. Uh, maybe these cars will be limited for uh, pleasure activities, which, which which is good already. I mean, we, we, we have lots of uh, a wonderful backdrop here in, in Canada where you can drive your car, you have race tracks and so on. But in cities, um, and if you want to use your car on a daily basis, electrification is the only way. And we, we followed maybe not the, the, the same path as the others. We wanted to create a, a, not an electric car, but a, a, a Porsche that is electric. That means a car that, that has the Porsche DNA, uh, that drives like a Porsche, that feels like a Porsche, that, that looks like a Porsche. And, and I can tell you, because I received my Taycan this week, I can tell you this is, and, I, and I'm really a petrol head. I can tell you I'm really a petrol head. But this car is, is just fantastic. It's, uh, mm. it's, it's emotional. It has a soul. Um, it's, it's, it's looking incredibly Porsche, all the proportions, you know, um, slope, um, the, the bonnet, everything is Porsche in this car, and, and it drives wonderfully. So it's, it's the future, and uh, for the Porsche fans, don't, don't be afraid. This is a, this is a bright future. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I, so I, I've driven 993, I've driven 997, 991, um, and, and I know the emotional factor of it, but I haven't been in a take -in, but I, I know a few people who have, and they say this is this is the same experience. It, you know, maybe it's not as loud, but everything else about it is the same experience. So, um, to answer, so that, maybe I, I didn't answer your, your question about 911. Um, uh, hmm. Will there be an electric 911 one day? Maybe. Uh, today, uh, 911 is only combustion engine uh, because this is this is still uh, we think the best formula. Uh, mm. But the car is ready for a hybrid powertrain. It's 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 mm. already designed for that. And the day we have the possibility, and you know, we are really working a lot on that. Our um, uh, technicians or uh, engineers are working a lot on that to find the magic recipe between the the, the weight and and uh, and and efficiency and driving dynamics. And we are getting closer. I can tell you that there are already some, some uh, uh, test, test cars, prototypes that, um, that show that electrification of a sports car um, uh, is excellent because you have this instant torque uh, that you can use in complement to the, the combustion engine and, and plug-in hybrid sports cars. Uh, we have seen that also with the Panamera that is a four-door sports car. It's working very well. So the, the day we can fit um, a, a compact enough um, hybrid powertrain in a 911 and, uh, and get the same driving pleasure with more efficiency, um, uh, we will do it. We will do it for sure. So I, I, I you know, this is an outsider's opinion. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, I, I've noticed in the the marketing for global global marketing for Porsche, um, it seems like in the last few years, and and you know maybe it stood out the most with the most recent Super Bowl ad with the you know the 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 cars being stolen from the the, the museum and everything that. Porsche has allowed itself to have a little bit more of a sense of humor uh, with itself, and and uh, and I, I like that. I think all brands should should um, you know 
sort of have a little bit of a personality and Porsche has a, a bold personality, but it, it wasn't always um, as playful as I've noticed it be a little bit more recently. Um, is that something that, you know, it's just kind of a one-off or something, you know, maybe just a, a trial or, or have you, have you noticed that the brand is, is maybe just giving itself a little bit more, uh, adding a little bit more smile to the, to the brand? I, so you know, I, I think you, you could ask this question to my colleagues of uh, North America because they, they are the ones that that created this mm. this whole um, story, and it's a great story, by the way. The, the, the results mm. were outstanding, and I think that um, it, yeah, it, it, the intention was that we we have we think we have a, a great brand, and that we should talk to uh, to uh, also to the public and show that the brand um, is is. Um, accessible uh, there is the, to create a proximity to 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 create an interest for for people who are not familiar with the brand and i think that this uh, super bowl ad was a, was a, a first of all a, a huge opportunity but also how it was realized how it was made with a sense of humor uh, with a, with a, a di very dynamic scenario it was great i really loved it i would have Love to that to do that in Canada, but um, uh, I think this was uh, I think a, a big uh, big work. With they invested a lot of money in in that, and the result is 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 awesome. It's outstanding. So um, uh, and we benefited from that, of course, uh, also in Canada. So uh, yeah, I, I think this is this was a, a one-off initiative this year, but I'm sure that uh, it will give us ideas for the future to uh, to be more accessible, to have a different tone of voice. And, uh, and this is definitely something we want to do to to interact with uh, with new target groups, with uh, with younger customers, uh, and and with people who can just uh, see the brand really for the first time with this kind of ad. So I, you've mentioned younger uh, customers a few times. Is that a, a major driving force? Um, you know, sort of you know, with marketing initiatives uh, going forward to, uh, or, you know, it's, it's obviously you're never going to abandon your your current customer base and target, but are younger people um, something that you want to focus on a little bit um, harder? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is clearly a priority. Um, and, and as you said, we want to continue to interact with our traditional customers, but uh, um, uh, we, I think that we have a, a brand made of, uh, of, a mix of tradition and innovation, and um, I think that um, the, the awareness of that uh, uh, with young generation is not that good, and we want to improve that. We want mm -hmm. to improve uh, to to show that um, a Porsche experience is great, and and you you know we have also programs to to to. Um, uh, for shorter term access to our brand, like uh, a Porsche Drive, it's also in the same intention. The intention is that you don't ultimately need to own a Porsche to, to get this experience and to access to this experience. So for us, it, it goes with, uh, uh, of course, to, to the fact that we continue our traditional communication, that we continue to be on racetracks with tra classic event Porsche clubs, uh, it's, it's our DNA, we will not change that. But we want, and I want personally to extend that um, uh, a lot. And uh, I don't know if you have seen, for example, in Canada, we have now, uh, uh, we did a, a great uh, a short movie with Emily Batty, uh, the, the mountain bike champions, champion that is well known here. And this is, she's so passionate about the brand. Um, mm -hmm. And this is typically something that we want to uh, to see and to specify. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I encourage you to have a look at this uh, movie because she talks so well about the, the brand she loves. She, she's a Porsche uh, customer herself. And uh, uh, it's not fake. What she says is, is, is coming from, uh, uh, she's very emotional. It's coming from her, her heart. And um, have a look at this movie on, on YouTube. It's uh, it's great. It has already reached, I think, two hundred fifty thousand views. So it's it's, it's mm. working well. And this is typically something we want to do in the future mm. uh, yeah. to engage more with young generation and also to engage more with uh, what makes Canada um, uh, what is specific to Canada. Mm. Well, if you if you want me to help get the younger generation, I'll I'll dye my beard and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, look, I'll look much <laughs> yeah. younger. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Porsche Drive is really interesting for for people who don't know. You're you're able to just through your your phone actually uh, have access to a Porsche for a day, a couple of days, a month. Yeah, there, there's the the whole subscription model. Um, do do you see that being something that that really becomes um, you know a driving force of the brand in years to come? Yeah, we see we see a market for that. 
we see potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the, the, I received the, the August result of Porsche Drive, and obviously uh, during the COVID time, we, it was impossible to really draw any conclusions. But uh, the, the latest results of July and August show that uh, there is a real appetite. We, we are, I think, the, there are several pilots in North America, and Toronto uh, in August was the strongest pilot, that's the best result. Uh, mm -hmm. That's really showing that there is a huge appetite from uh, customers that, you know, at the touch of an app that can access our models and uh, there is an excellent service. You uh, you choose the car you, you want, you have this monthly fee and so everything is included and, and uh, the car is, is delivered to your door. Uh, so uh, with with the best uh, safety measures, and you can, you can also pick it up at the dealership, of course. Um, we, we have seen uh, a huge success of 911 models in this program. We see the first uh, uh, people uh, choosing the Taycan because they are very curious about this mm -hmm. car. And yes, this is a, this is still a pilot program that we are running with our dealership uh, FAF in Toronto. Mm -hmm. But my plan is that we have a minimum one or two other regions in Canada where this program is running next year. Uh, in Vancouver, I would love that, and uh, certainly also one in Quebec. And uh, and we see also uh, short-term rentals uh, picking up. Uh, the, the drive program is is more uh, subscription model, uh, but short-term rentals are are really picking up, and I see um, a huge potential for that. For example, mm -hmm. you know, driving a, a Boxster uh, during a, a nice summer weekend, for example, driving uh, Macan to go, uh, I don't know, to Mont Tremblant in the winter. Um, this this works. This works, and uh, and I see potential for that. Yeah, it's a so, new uh, way to engage with the brand. Yeah, so so I I run a non traditional marketing agency where people you know my, my specialty is wacky ideas. You guys need to partner with like Tinder and uh, and you know all these guys trying to impress a woman. They get a Porsche for for a day and uh, you know they could they could be getting seven a month or so. <laughs> there you go. There there's a, there's a million dollar idea for free. Um, hey, what, I cannot comment on that. <laughs> What uh, what is your favorite um, you know, Porsche model? You, you mentioned you started with uh, you know, nine four four, but like you know, obviously you have access to to some some beautiful cars, whether you know for short term or or ownership. But what what is? Do you still have a dream car, or or is it just all of them? It's uh, it's the most difficult question. It's like ask someone what is your favorite car, uh, child, and mm -hmm. uh, it is difficult to answer that. But uh, generally, I I answer. Of course, I have plenty of models. We could talk during the next hour about that because every Porsche has, mm. has, has its personality. But I'm always saying this is my next car. My next car is, is my favorite because I discover again how um, uh, our engineers in, in Stuttgart are really gifted to, to, at one hand, keep this very special DNA um, with special recognizable design, but at every time reinvent it and uh, and uh, also uh, projecting this in, into the future. So my, my new Porsche, the one I, I received two days ago, is a Taycan 4S. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I drove already uh, intensively the last two days. And I, I must say I'm blown away by this car. Uh, but if you want to know my, my pers the, the personal Porsche I have in my garage, it's a, it's a 964 Cabrio from 90 that I found here in Canada. I love this car. I love everything in this car. It's a modern classic. Uh, it has a, a beautiful um, uh, metallic paint. Uh, it's, it's purple metallic with a, with a cream interior. Very special combination. I like this this generation because it, it it's it's already modern, you know. Uh, but it, it has really the, the the original body of the 911. It still has this uh, uh, this flat six, flat six engine that, that has such a great noise, uh, not a noise, but music, I would say. And uh, I, I love to drive in Canada with this car. I went to, uh, to many times to to Niagara. I went to Muskoka. I drove to Montreal. It's 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 great. So I would say yes. My my at the moment my my favorite uh, 911 is 964, but I can tell you, I love nine, the front engines like you know 944, uh, S2, 968 are, are great cars. I love 9, 928. I had a GT, 928 GT. I, I can tell you, it's also incredible uh, forward-looking car. So yeah, so many possibilities and so many personalities. Mm -hmm. All right, two more questions, then I'll give you your day oh, back. Yeah. Um, so you know. 
you, you talk about the love of driving. Porsche is really a, a driver's car through and through. One of the things that I find so fascinating about the brand is it really, um, you know, it does encourage driving. It does encourage, you know, um, you know, high high mileage and things like that. It's not not unusual to see Porsches still on the road with 100, 150, 200,000 kilometers. And, you know, people wear them like a like a badge of honor. Some of these cars, it's like, you know, two owners, three owners and stuff like that. Um, you know, when you think of some of the other luxury brands, like, you know, it's like, you know, the, you, want to you, drive buy, you, you buy the cars, you put them in your garage and you just sort of wipe them with the diaper and stuff like that. Um, you know, one that, you know, it's the most amazing thing for your brand ever because, you know, it, it speaks to quality and value and stuff, but it also speaks to the cars last so long, they're not running to the dealership to buy a new one. So how do you, how do you sort of balance out the two, two things? Uh, you know, as I just said, there, there are so many personalities uh, of, mm. of models. Every model is, is different. And even if you look at the, the, the latest uh, models like the 992, uh, you see that we have, I think we are the only sports car manufacturers with so many versions, you know, between the, the, mm -hmm. the let's say, the GT model, GT2, GT3, extremely sporty, um, the, 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 the Targa model, more uh, lifestyle and, uh, uh, you know, driving pleasure. And so every car has its personality. So the problem is that you have the envy, you, have, you want to have many. <laughs> you want to drive mm -hmm. many. So you change or you accumulate <laughs> if you have mm -hmm. a big garage. And, uh, and so, uh, but, you know, it's... Um, the thing is, the big difference, as, as you said, is that it, it's a car that you want and that you can drive every day. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I was uh, when I was in in Winnipeg last year. I think the temperature was minus twenty five degrees, and uh, I, I met some people who drive nine eleven GT three with winter tires every day, and uh, that's mm -hmm. that's Porsche. You you first of all you you feel. It's you know the ergonomics and, and the, the quality of the interior. Um, you feel good in this car. And, you know and if you if you drive a three five six, you already f have this feeling of that everything is at the right place. That you know there, there is this this uh, comfort and uh, this drivability for for every day. So um, most of our customers just want to drive, and that's why they have high mileage. I met a customer that has a nine eleven turbo uh, that has one million kilometers. So uh, it's mm. it's just the way it is, and uh, buying Porsche that uh, is uh, twenty five or thirty years old and that has two hundred thousand kilometers, as as long as it's well maintained, um, yeah, you can continue to drive maybe another two hundred, no problem. Mm. Yeah. So okay, last question. Um, yeah. we, we talked about the Super Bowl ad. You said that was uh, you know a North American initiative. One thing that I believe was a Canadian initiative, and I, I believe it was your idea, was uh, recently, obviously before COVID, um, you guys did the Canadian restoration competition where you got all of the dealerships to um, find an old car, bring it back to life, and uh, you know, sort of uh, get graded on on their ability as a as a. And th these were you know dealerships and and service uh, uh, departments and stuff like that. Where where did that idea come from? Because I, I saw the results. You know, some of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen in my life and it was really an interesting initiative I am um, you know uh, um, uh, Porsche in Langley they did a whole video series on their their 911 SC and and so I, I followed that along because that, that's my favorite model um so wh where did that idea come from and were you happy with how it came out no oh, it's just the beginning in Canada I can tell you uh, the idea come years ago came years ago and uh, uh, it's really an idea I I had in France um, uh, discussing with, uh, and it was a really long time ago, I must say, uh, that, that I had first this idea and then it took some time to realize it. But uh, um, uh, I was surprised because the dealerships were um, maybe 10 to 15 years ago, they were really concentrating on new cars, you know? And uh, for them, a uh, 10 years old Porsche at that time was, you know, already a classic car maybe. And uh, they were, they considered that it was not their role to, to continue to engage and they were focusing on new cars and uh, I, every time uh, you know since i work for porsche i always wanted to bring all the the facets of the brand together and i, I you know long time ago um having a classic porsche was uh, it was not the same customer that was true the, the, you had customers that had classic porsche in their garage and didn't want to hear about new cars and vice versa new car buyers they 
do you want to hear about classic cars? And that has changed completely. Now, uh, our customers, they, they, they want to have a, a modern Porsche that they can drive every day and that, for example, is sustainable like the Taycan, but they want to have their pleasure car in the garage, their, their, the, the car that they want to drive on the weekend and with clubs and on, the, on, on nice curvy roads. And I thought it would be good to, first of all, bring that together because um, these customers are the same now. Uh, that was the first reason why. And the second reason why was that um, um, every dealership now uh, needs to, uh, to to represent the brand's facets, all of them, uh, because it's, it's a destination for our customers. When you go to a dealership, you don't want to go to a showroom uh, because sh going to a showroom, visiting a showroom is something you do with every brand. Uh, if you come to a dealership, you need to, you want to see that you are, first of all, part of the family. You want to see that all the, the facets of the brand are present. For example, motorsport. Uh, just an example, downstairs I'm sitting, uh, I'm here in, in North Toronto, they have a motorsport corner that they, they just created now. Um, a classic corner. Uh, all of that, you know, club gathering, cars and coffee, all of that happens at the dealerships right now. And, and this classic restoration challenge was a way, first of all, to bring back the expertise to work on classic, to generate turnover, because as I said at the beginning, uh, this is a company and we need to make profit. And every dealership need, needs to be profitable to invest and reinvest in the, in the, in the dealership. So um, it, it brings back uh, customers to the, to the service area. Uh, and uh, we have great, we have a program of, uh, of um, a classic parts, a very active program. We are um, launching new classic parts every year and we have uh, thousands of references now. So it's a way to create business and last but not least, it's a way to engage and communicate with our customers because as you just said, it's much better than advertising. It's much better than doing hard selling. Uh, you you know you create a movie you invite your customers to see the progress of the restoration um, you can do lots of activities uh, I would not say marketing activities but just communication activities with your to engage with your passionate customers and you engage with a big target group uh, that's not the only one but a big portion of our customers are uh, classic fans they are uh, passionate customers and seeing a Porsche Center or restoring a classic car. Uh, engaging with uh, with with the, this uh, target group to show where the restoration stands, what they have done, how they have painted the car or repaired the engine. It's great activities. You can do that online. You can do that physically, and uh, it's you know it's a, it's a virtuous circle. As mm. simple as that. And uh, uh, we had the first edition in Canada uh, last year. It was very successful, and and you you create also. Uh, uh, a feeling, you know, with the Porsche staff, all the Porsche employees, the technicians, uh, it's a team building thing. It's it's something where people are proud of. They are proud to show the results. Uh, I've seen technicians and uh, Porsche technicians speaking about their cars in front of, of cameras, something they never did before. So, yeah, it's it's. I think it's a great thing for the brand. It's a great thing for our community. All right. Um Mark, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous. Um, you're great. I, I appreciate uh, you doing this at all. Um, and uh, just, you know, this this just shows, you know, not only uh, the brand, uh, but yourself. So I, I appreciate it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just <laughs> thank you so much. This was fun. Yeah, it was a pleasure. You have a great t-shirt, by the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, now it was a pleasure to discuss and, uh, and to engage. And again, this is such a great brand with uh, such a great history and a great future ahead, I tell you. All right, thank you so much.